Hello, uh, my name is uh, Michael Stahl and I want to give you a quick status update about the current uh, ODF situation for this year's uh, LibreOffice conference and uh, I work for a company called Allotropia Software. We do lots of consulting related to LibreOffice. And so, um, first a quick uh, overview about the uh, history of ODF. And uh, in the beginning, in the year 2002, Sun Microsystems wanted to have an uh, open standard for uh, office documents. So they went to this uh, standards organization, OASIS, and uh, there the uh, technical committee uh, was created for this purpose to develop the uh, open document format for Office applications. And in 2005 the first version of um, the standard was, was finished. It became an OASIS standard and this uh, OASIS standard 1.0 was then taken to a different organization, ISO, and uh, in this subcommittee number 34 there, it was uh, turned into an uh, international standard. And then a couple of years later there was a uh, new OASIS standard 1.1 1 .1, and in 2011 there was a version uh, 1.2 was finished and uh, this one contains a lot of new features and substantial changes and uh, now, um, just the earlier this year, in June, we managed to uh, finish and OASIS has published the OASIS standard for uh, ODF version 1.3 and uh, so generally speaking all of these uh, versions are uh, backwards compatible, which is nice so um, given that we have a new version now. Uh, finally, after 10 years it's finished. I think it's time to celebrate a bit. And so what about this uh, technical committee? Um, who is actually in that committee and who is doing the work? Um, so first we have uh, Alfred from Microsoft and uh, Andreas who is an individual and uh, is also the maintainer of the GNOMERIC spreadsheet application. Then we have Francis who is uh, one of our editors and uh, myself. I am also technically an editor now and uh, then we have Patrick who is probably the uh, the, the uh, longest uh, running member of this uh, committee. Uh, he is uh, one of the chairs and also an editor. And then we have Regina who is representing the uh, Document Foundation and uh, she is doing uh, quite a lot of uh, very uh, excellent work there. And then we have Rich from Microsoft and uh, also uh, Svante uh, who is an individual member and uh, is also now a co-chair and uh, editor. And uh, I should like to point out that uh, uh, this entire talk is just basically my uh, personal opinion and I do in no way speak for the uh, committee or for ACES or for anybody else. So, uh, since we have finished ODF 1.3 now, uh, what are we currently working on? Um, we actually started to um, to discuss the uh, proposals that should go into version uh, 1.4, the next version of ODF, um, about three years ago already, um, which I was surprised to learn recently. So um, currently the committee is still very busy working on all of these proposals and also earlier this year we have um, discussed and uh, accepted a new charter for the TC um, because we noticed that the uh, previously current version of the charter 
um, made um, uh, ambitious predictions about what should happen in the year 2005, so it was a little bit outdated. Um, and the most important um, item, I think, in the new charter is that we want to move to a bit of a more uh, agile uh, process and um, not have another 10-year delay between uh, versions. So, um, I as part of that, we want to um, to deliver a committee specification draft uh, once a year, and uh, yeah, hopefully this should um, should provide a bit of an incentive to s speed uh, things up a bit. And what have we done already for the next version of ODF? So uh, we are tracking all of the proposals that should go into ODF in the uh, OASIS JIRA and um, we have resolved already somewhere between 35 and 40 issues there and uh, there were several new features that have been accepted. Um, there are more than a dozen improvement issues which uh, in some cases are some sort of clarification of this specification and uh, in other cases maybe even a small feature. And uh, the largest chunk of the accepted issues have been uh, defects in the uh, specification that have been fixed. And what is still left to do? We have um, about, again, 35 uh, issues that are targeted at ODF 1.4 which have not been resolved yet and then there are an additional more than 100 uh, issues that have the target ODF next which um, means they are uh, basically ready to be discussed by the committee and uh, in addition to that there are maybe 50 um, that have uh, ODF later, which means they will only be discussed if there's nothing uh, more important. Um, but uh, of course, since I mentioned we want to be a bit more uh, agile, um, it uh, doesn't mean uh, if uh, an issue has uh, the target ODF 1.4 that it's guaranteed to get into ODF 1.4 there probably will be a time-based uh, cut-off at some point, but I don't know yet when that will be. And uh, in addition to these uh, issues that are already tracked in JIRA, um, we have in LibreOffice uh, many features that have already been uh, implemented as ODF extensions. Um, for which there is not yet an Oasis uh, JIRA issue. These features are tracked uh, in the wiki on this ODF extensions uh, page. And in addition to that we have found um, while running all of the unit tests that uh, are in the LibreOffice code base that there are ad additional um, namespace, uh, extension namespace elements and attributes being uh, exported and uh, these are uh, tracked in a schema file I that is in the uh, LibreOffice Git repository because uh, without that the uh, unit test would fail because it uh, tries to validate every exported ODF document against the schema and uh, some of these are still missing both in the Oasis JIRA and on the wiki and it's possible that there are even more um, features already implemented uh, for which there uh, exists no unit test. Um, of course it's hard to find these uh, features but yeah and now we come to the question of how is the uh, development of the ODF standard being funded and um, this was a, a bit of a problem during the ODF 1.3 uh, process because it turned out that all of the uh, large corporations that uh, have funded this uh, in previous decades um, were no longer interested and so uh, Regina came up with this uh, idea 
um, that we should um, uh, distribute the, the the funding so that uh, we aren't uh, dependent on a, a single large corporation anymore and uh, this is now um, set up as uh, COSM, the community of uh, ODF standard maintainers and it's uh, run uh, via some uh, non-profit uh, corporation in the uh, UK that's uh, managed by uh, Simon Phipps and uh, there was seed funding provided for this by the Document Foundation and uh, then uh, several uh, corporate sponsors also pitched in like Microsoft and Collabora and CIB and what's being funded there is um, the ODF editors, so Francis and uh, Patrick, um, are being funded to actually uh, create the um, standard uh, uh, documents and uh, schemas out of all of the um, proposals that are in all of these uh, JIRA issues. And uh, now also um, Svante is being funded to implement uh, ODF 1.3 support in the um, ODF Toolkit project, which is uh, these days also hosted at DDF. And uh, what we have, uh, what has been achieved so far with this funding is that the uh, 1.3 standard uh, is actually finished now. And um, what we hope to be able to get funded soon, or I'm not sure if it's actually funded yet, we want to uh, automate the uh, editorial release uh, process a bit so that uh, there isn't as much um, um, manual uh, work involved. So we want to have some tooling to automate things. Um, which brings us to the next topic, the uh, editing workflow for the uh, next version of ODF. And yeah, as I said, we have all of these uh, proposals in the Oasis Jira. So um, how are we going to get them uh, into the specification documents? We nowadays, since about a year ago, we have a GitHub repository which um, contains all of the uh, deliverables of the specification, so um, the ODT documents and um, also the uh, various generated files like PDFs and so on. And it also um, contains the uh, tooling that uh, processes these uh, deliverables and converts them and uh, whatnot. So there are things like um, converting the um, ODT file to HTML or um, extracting uh, default values out of the uh, specification text because for technical reasons they cannot be in the schema. And um, we are already using this uh, GitHub repository for a bit of a um, pull request workflow to enable reviews, but um, this is n while while it's useful, it's not as useful as it would be for a software development project because um, there is no tool that can uh, merge uh, ODT documents, so um, it's uh, not possible to use uh, branches for that. And yeah, they are currently. Um, a lot of manual uh, steps involved when editing the documents, so um, things like version numbers have to be uh, adjusted and uh, links to previous versions have to be um, set uh, multiple different locations and uh, there are four different um, parts that which are which means four ODT documents that all have to basically show the same uh, um, information for this boilerplate and it's uh, all very uh, time-intensive and error-prone to, um, to 
to maintain all of that manually so we are currently planning how to um, automate the uh, workflow a bit there so that uh, we can have some uh, tooling to do the uh, boring parts of the work and we also want to have a bit of uh, continuous integration there um, that can create uh, all of the um, uh, different output uh, formats for example the uh, ODT uh, is converted into PDF and HTML and this is currently done uh, manually by just starting writer and uh, going through the menus so yeah this uh, would be nice to have one question which uh, held up uh, the ODF 1.3 process quite a lot uh, at the end was uh, how do we convert the uh, ODT specifications into HTML files that uh, look nice in all of the browsers um, and uh, because um, the previous versions of ODF were all uh, also available as HTML and of course this is uh, very useful so in Writer there are basically two different um, export uh, filters um, the first one is the save as HTML so it's available in the save as um, menu item and uh, this one is implemented in C++ and we uh, found that um, it can only uh, export the math formulas um, as images which are not at all accessible so this is uh, clearly not ideal and then there were uh, some issues with the uh, table borders and also problems with uh, um, nested numbering so somehow the uh, numbering turned out um, different uh, in different places and uh, this was particularly bad because you can have uh, references to some numbered uh, paragraph somewhere and uh, well it's bad if these numbers don't match then and um, then there were also some cross references that were uh, not exported as hyperlinks that you can click on so yeah some issues there and unfortunately um, nobody had time to investigate um, how to fix those problems so the second option to uh, export from writer is the uh, export to XHTML so that is under the export uh, item in the menu and um, this one is implemented in XSLT and at first it uh, appeared that uh, it would be uh, just basically unusably slow um, with the implementation of uh, XSLT that is used by default in LibreOffice um, in particular in part 3 where there were thousands of headings and uh, there was some um, algorithm in the XSLT that was uh, qu quadratic uh, iterating all of those uh, headings um, but we were able to fix that and then the speed up was so tremendous that it only took about half an hour to export part 3 and we found that if we install the um, Saxon XSLT2 transformer extension uh, which is basically providing a different uh, implementation of XSLT uh, we get a enormous speed up and the uh, export can be done in about three minutes which is now practical and uh, then Svante um, fortunately and thankfully had a lot of spare time available last year to fix a lot of small um, problems with the quality of the generated uh, HTML so it looks uh, really nicely now and um, in order to make all of this uh, bug fixing easier we decided to uh, put a copy of the uh, LibreOffice XSLT filter into the ODFTC Git repository 
so that uh, we um, don't have to uh, wait for a, a new release of LibreOffice if there are any problems that we need to fix. We have just uh, recently uh, synced the um, two copies of the accessibility filter again so, and there is um, just uh, one patch remaining in the ODFTC fork of it which is that it um, adds uh, some uh, huge uh, JavaScript blob called MathJax um, uh, because one serious problem that we had is that uh, the uh, Google uh, browser that has uh, like most of the the, the, the browser market um, I forgot what it's called, Internet Explorer or something like that um, it cannot um, um, display the 20 years old uh, MathML uh, properly so um, and that's what this uh, JavaScript blob then, uh, then fixes. It somehow converts the MathML that's in the document to uh, something that uh, the Google browser can display. And now for something slightly different. Uh, what was going on in uh, recent years in the LibreOffice project with relation to ODF? So, uh, firstly, the uh, Document Foundation uh, put out a uh, tender to uh, implement ODF 1.3 conformance in LibreOffice and uh, this was awarded to CIB and uh, it was uh, all implemented and uh, is shipping in the uh, 7.0 release and since this release, ODF 1.3 extended is the default file format of LibreOffice. So then there was a second tender which uh, was about uh, adding um, features that are new in ODF 1.3 but which had uh, not been implemented in LibreOffice. So this was the ODF 1.3 Delta tender and um, this one was also awarded to CIB and uh, these features, um, most of which were in chart, are um, now shipping in the LibreOffice 7.2 release. And then there is a third tender which is currently underway about um, implementing automated OEF filter regression testing. So the idea there was that we have this um, server somewhere which has about 100,000 uh, documents on it and um, it's loading all of these documents and um, exporting them to a couple different file formats and uh, the goal here is to compare the uh, ODF documents that have been produced by the uh, current um, development version of LibreOffice against the documents that have been produced by the uh, previous version from the previous day, for example, so that um, if there are any unexpected uh, changes there, um, we would know about them. And this has been uh, awarded to Collabora and they are currently working on it. So um, now to uh, the final uh, topic of this presentation. Um, you want to add a new feature to LibreOffice that uh, requires some sort of ODF extension. So uh, how do you go about doing that? So uh, firstly you can uh, add the Im implementation uh, with elements and attributes in an extension namespace. The uh, prefix for this namespace is LOX and uh, this is all described in the uh, wiki. And uh, then you should add a unit test for, uh, for the new feature and um, probably this unit test is going to fail because the um, uh, testing framework runs um, 
the ODF valid validator on the uh, exported files and um, it's going to complain about your new extension um, elements so uh, you have to add them to the schema file which is in the git repository in this uh, directory here and um, usually this is uh, quite easy if you just want to add another attribute somewhere um, if it's um, a more complicated case you can uh, always ask me and uh, then once your uh, new feature is uh, in the master branch you can uh, add it in the wiki to the uh, page that lists all of the uh, ODF extensions and uh, during this uh, whole process you can uh, ping Regina or Svante or me and we can um, give you hints on what to do or what not to do uh, it would also be quite useful to have a um, demo document for the feature because uh, very often uh, um, new features are also kind of obscure and uh, it's not that obvious um, where to find them in the user interface and so on so that would be useful to have and uh, then you have several uh, options you could if you like um, write a proposal yourself to get the new feature into uh, the ODF uh, specification and um, there is a public mailing list at Oasis called Office Comment and uh, it just requires subscription but uh, anybody can do that and send uh, ideas to this list or alternatively you can ping the three of us and we can discuss the feature with you and uh, um, write a proposal then and we can um, get it on the uh, agenda of the uh, TC and um, hopefully discuss it uh, rather quickly and um, based on the uh, feedback that we get from this discussion in the TC we can uh, give you some uh, quick feedback if um, there are uh, some uh, changes required sometimes um, people uh, object to certain uh, aspects of a new feature and want to do it uh, differently or um, find that uh, um, there is some obscure way to use an existing feature to do the same thing or uh, things like that uh, but in any case we will uh, get back to you with um, the result of the discussion and um, hopefully get uh, the new feature into the next uh, committee specification draft and um, then uh, ideally uh, if there are any uh, changes required you would have uh, some time to uh, adapt the implementation before uh, the next release happens and it goes out to the uh, users so the goal here is that we want to have a quicker um, uh, feedback uh, cycle um, for implementers of new features so that uh, we don't have a situation that we had in the past where um, we have to ask uh, people what they did five or ten years ago um, which they likely have uh, forgotten the details of so um, that was all for me and uh, thanks uh, for uh, listening